Well, last time, things really looked black for our friends, especially when every light in Squaw's ankle went out. Well, now starts the fun, Natasha. Let's run into the bank vault. Is a rat neck. Of course, darling. But then again, so is first one. Bullwinkle, I think somebody's planning to hold up Squaw's ankle. Won't that make her fall down? I mean, they're going to rob the town in the dark. Jump and gee horse that rock. How do we stop them? We light up the town again. But how, Rocky? With our supercharged worm herd. And the brave squirrel reached in the back of a nearby armored car that he and Bullwinkle happened to have. Doesn't everybody? And pulled out one of their special glow worms. <coughs> now, if we can just get him to cooperate. Meanwhile, Boris and Natasha had reached the half-open door of the bank vault. It's just like taking brandy from a baby, Natasha. That's taking candy, darling. You take what you want, I take what I want. But at that instant... Boris, the town is all lit up like, you'll pardon the expression, Christmas tree. Oh, boy! As old Roman ancestors used to say, in hoc signo vinces. Meaning? The jig is up. <laughs> Little did Boris and Natasha know that those flashing lights were really Rocky's herd of glowworms, lighting up loyally and making the street bright as day. Keep at it, boys! <laughs> well, with their plan ruined, Boris and Natasha had to beat a hasty retreat. Squaw's ankle is safe at last. Okay, fellas, you can knock off now. They don't think they want to, Rock. It was true. So delighted with the glowworms with their success that they stayed at their post from that moment on. This was a boon to the citizens of Squaw's ankle, for the glowworms could change positions in a matter of seconds. Thus, the same sign was able to blink welcome to new arrivals and bye-bye to those leaving town. When a store changed hands, it was a simple matter to change signs. And glowworms were invaluable at clearance sales time. Of course, people flocked to Squaw's ankle to see this wondrous sight. Thanks to Rocky and Bullwinkle, the town was finally on the map. And so as our heroes got ready to go home... And in gratitude, dear boy, we are changing the name of Squaw's ankle to Squirrel's ankle. Hooray! Everybody was delighted with the idea. Not quite everybody, Sonny Jim. Well, this is it. This is what, darling? This is end of electric power cable. 20 million volts. You fasten that end to that track, I fast this end to this track. And then train rolls over wires. <laughs> Roast moose and squirrel fricassee. Oh, how can you be so mean, darling? Because it'll gonna be the end for moose and squirrel. So? The end always justifies the means. Then they can't fail this time. Congratulations, Boris. You said it, Natasha. Shake. Thus it was that the train bearing our heroes sped safely back toward Frostbite Falls. <laughs> Gee, I sort of hate to leave the Worm Ranch, Bullwinkle. Oh, I don't know. I thought I was going to be a cowboy. And? Who wants to be known as the Worm Boy? Yeah. Lucky we weren't raising ducks to make down pillows on them. Oh, come. Then you'd be known as a down boy. Pretty sneaky, Rock. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What would you say? I'd say it was the end. And so it is of this story. But next time, we'll start a brand new bushy tale of Rocky the Flying Squirrel.